In this video, we're going to take a look at inverse trigonometric derivatives, and we're going to start off by saying, what is the derivative of sine x? Well, y equals sine x specifically. Well, this is simple. Our derivative is y prime is equal to cosine of x. Okay, so what happens if instead of y equals sine x, we have x is equal to sine y, and I want the derivative with respect to x? Well, we're going to take a look at this, but first I should point out that this is the same thing as writing that sine to the negative 1 of x is equal to y. This is the inverse function. They both mean exactly the same thing. This is the logical operator for equivalence, so these mean the exact same thing. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to implicitly differentiate these functions. So on the left side we have the derivative of x is 1 and the derivative of sine y is equal to cosine of y times dy dx okay and we can also write this as y prime is equal to 1 over the cosine of y okay now here's where we're going to get fancy and you might not figure this out on your own but we have the identity that cosine squared x plus sine squared x is equal to 1. So this means that we can rewrite this as cosine of x is equal to the square root of 1 minus sine squared x. But we know that in this case x is equal to sine y, so we're just going to make a little substitute here for simplicity and we're going to say this is 1 minus sine squared y. And we're going to say that this is cos y. Okay, well, if x is sine y, then this is the same thing as the root of 1 minus x squared, because x is equal to sine y. And sine y squared is the same thing as sine to the 2 of y. So, we can rewrite this derivative over here as y prime is equal to 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. And this is the derivative of sine inverse x. Okay, so now that we've proved sine inverse x, I would like to see on your own time if you can prove the derivative of cosine inverse of x, which I'll give you the derivative here, is a negative 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared and the inverse of tan x, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. This one obviously a little bit more detailed, a little bit harder because this involves sine over cosine, but I'm sure you can figure this out if you try hard enough. Okay, so we're going to jump straight into a practice problem here. In fact, I am going to do what I always do and rewrite this here because, of course, the one identity I don't have down here is the one you'll be needing for the problem. Okay, I will erase tan, but hopefully you have that written down. Okay, so here is the problem. y is equal to sine inverse of x all cubed. Okay, so the derivative is, well, we just use the chain rule. So this is 3 times sine inverse of x all squared multiplied by the derivative of the inside, which is the inverse sine, which is 1 over the square root of 1 minus x squared. So there's your derivative of this function here. That's it. That's all there is to it. So for your practice question, I will give you the derivative of the inverse tangent, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. In fact, I should clarify right now, these are the derivatives, not the functions. These are the derivatives. If that is confusing you, I'm terribly sorry. Okay, so this is the derivative of tan x, and I want you to find the derivative of y is equal to 2x times the inverse of tan x. This may also be written as arctan of x. These are 
Again, the same thing. So pause the video, see if you can figure it out, and I will be back in a second. Alright, so you may notice we once again have a product rule question. So let's take a look here. The derivative of the first function is 2 times the inverse of tan x, and then we add 2x times the derivative of tan inverse x, which is 1 over 1 plus x squared. So we're just going to write this down here. And here we go. This is the derivative. Very simple question. Um, it's just a matter of memorizing these integrals, or not integrals, derivatives. You don't have to. You can drive them if you want on the spot, but it's going to be much easier if you remember these, memorize these, uh, store them away in your knowledge bank. Three, four years from now, I promise you, if you do enough practice problems and you don't even do math for two or three years, you'll remember these because they become a little bit intuitive after a while and these problems will become way less of an issue than what you practice. Again, you just, you need practice. There's, there's no way around that. You have to get practice on these questions, otherwise you will walk into an exam and say, I can't remember the derivative of inverse tan and I need to solve a problem and you'll get zero to six on a question because you simply didn't do enough practice. So there's inverse trig.